Good evening. Colonel Gaddafi has accused America of betraying him as he responded to growing international calls to step aside. The Libyan leader told the BBC that he was loved by all his people and denied there'd been any protests on the streets. He gave an interview on the day that Britain warned that military action couldn't be ruled out. Our Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen, was the only British television journalist to speak to Colonel Gaddafi earlier today. It was Colonel Gaddafi's first interview for Western journalists since this crisis started. He agreed to see the BBC, ABC News from the United States and the Sunday Times. He was fairly relaxed throughout the interview, which was held in a restaurant overlooking Tripoli port. He said the UN sanctions resolution against Libya was illegitimate. And then he was asked if he'd ever leave the country. <laughs> As if anyone would leave their homeland, he said. But Mr. Gaddafi, you are known as the leader here, and you've been the leader for many, many years. And there are plenty of people in this country who would say that the biggest obstacle to change for them and for Libya is you. He said his presence actually instigated change for the people. Mr. Gaddafi has no official title as leader or president. In recent years, you've had uh, a rapprochement with Western countries. Uh, you've had important Western leaders like Tony Blair coming here. But now there are Western leaders who are queuing up to say that you should go. Uh, do you feel a sense of betrayal about that? Of course it's betrayal, he said. They have no morals. Besides, if they want me to step down, what do I step down from? I'm not a monarch or a king. But you make speeches at the UN and you're identified very much with Libya, even if you don't have a formal title. <laughs> it's honorary, he said. It's nothing to do with exercising power or authority. In Britain, who has the power? Is it Queen Elizabeth or David Cameron? Mr. Gaddafi said, we didn't understand the Libyan system. No, I understand the system that you have here. But internationally, you're regarded as You don't as understand the, the system here. No, no, no. Don't, don't say I understand. You don't understand. And the world don't understand the system here, the biblical system here, the authority of the Bible. You don't understand it. But how do the people show their authority then? Because some who've gone out onto the streets to protest say that your people have shot at them. No demonstration at all in the streets. Have you seen? Did you see demonstrations? Uh, yes, I have. Yes. Where? I saw some some today. I Where? saw some in Zawiya yesterday. I saw demonstrations. Are they supporting us? No, they're not supporting. They us. are not against us. Some some were against you, and some were for no, you. No, no one against us. Against me for what? Because I am not president. But, but, they love me, all my people with me. They love me all. But if they do love you... They, they, they will die to, to protect me and my, my people. If Some you say they do love you, then why are they capturing Benghazi and they say they're against you there? Why are they in... It is a guide. It is a guide. It is a guide. Not my people. It is a guide. Al-Qaeda. Guide. Guide. Yes. Al -Qaeda. They, they came from outside. So they're the people pulling down the posters and putting up the flag of the king? It's Al-Qaeda, he said. They went into military bases and seized arms, and they're terrorizing the people. The people who had the weapons were youngsters. They're starting to lay down their weapons now as the drugs Al-Qaeda gave them wear off. And off he went, always called the leader by Libyans, but he says he can't resign, as he has no official position. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Tripoli. Well, that interview with Colonel Gaddafi took place um, just uh, earlier this evening. Let's go live to Tripoli now and talk to our Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen. Uh, Jeremy, he had strong words too for America, for countries of the West, including Britain. What did he have to say? Yes, yeah, strong words for Britain, especially as a matter of fact. Uh, he was asked about the fact that Britain has frozen Libyan assets and taken various other sanctions against uh, the Gaddafis, against Colonel Gaddafi himself. And he said, I challenge David Cameron to produce one shred of evidence that I have any money at all in Britain. One shred of evidence, he said. He went on quite strongly about that. And he said, and if anyone, can find, anyone can, can find it or can't find it, I'll put my two fingers in their eyes. 
This is a man, Jeremy, who's facing worldwide calls now to step aside. Those calls have been growing. Sanctions are starting to pile up. How did he seem to you? You sat there with him for an hour. How did he seem? You know, I think he's thriving on the pressure. He was relaxed. He laughed quite a lot. Uh, he was fully coherent, I think, at, at all times. Uh, he's made long speeches at the UN before, which some people have described as rambling. It wasn't rambling at all. Uh, he had quite a bit on his mind, and he told us what was on his mind. Uh, I think that, in a sense, he's enjoying this challenge. Uh, he's back in the position in which he was for many, many years, before he came in from the cold, albeit briefly, uh, where, once again, the, the international community, the West especially, is lined up against him. And I think he's relishing the challenge. He said that the West wanted to recolonize Libya, and he said that if the West ever invaded this place, he'd be with the soldiers fighting against them. Jeremy, thank you very much. Jeremy Bowen there, our Middle East editor in Tripoli tonight. Well, there was uh, more evidence today of Colonel Gaddafi's readiness to use military force against his own people. Fighter jets were sent in to target areas held by anti-government protesters. Two ammunition depots south of the rebel-held city of Benghazi, close to Ajabia, were reported to have been hit. Our World Affairs editor, John Simpson, witnessed one of those attacks. Some of these men are volunteers, some are regular soldiers who've abandoned Colonel Gaddafi for the revolution. All of them are worked up to a high pitch of excitement. A short time before, an Air Force plane came over and dropped bombs on the northern and southern outskirts of Ajabir. The explosions seem suspiciously far away from any major target and people immediately start theorizing that the pilot has deliberately avoided casualties and was planning to defect. Last week another pilot ejected and let his plane crash rather than bomb Ajabir. But the town's defenders are in a high state of tension and they blast off at random into the sky in case there's another air raid. They're not in fact doing this for the benefit of our camera. As they prepare themselves for the possibility of action, they're jumpy and very nervous. Few of them have any military experience. In spite of all this, though, we shouldn't mistake it for a civil war. This is a single series of actions, one plane, possibly two, coming over, bombing people here in order to scare them, because this is becoming a frontline area. Around the perimeter of Ajabir's defences, I found that some men had taken up positions just in case pro-Gaddafi forces decided to move in from their stronghold of Sirt, some way to the west. It doesn't seem particularly likely, but it's their way of showing their loyalty to the rebellion and showing off their weaponry. John Simpson, BBC News, Adjabaya. As we mentioned, the Gaddafi regime is now facing the prospect of new sanctions imposed this time by the European Union, including an arms embargo. The decision was backed by David Cameron, who revealed that plans for a military no-fly zone over Libya were being worked on, while other military action couldn't be ruled out. Our diplomatic correspondent, James Robbins, assesses the growing international pressure on Gaddafi. These extraordinary pictures, apparently from the town of Misrata, suggest the scale of violence in parts of Libya as ground is fought over. And these images are thought to come from the same town, as Colonel Gaddafi's regime is squeezed both by the scale of rebellion and increasing global pressure on him to give up now. First, the diplomatic pressure. In Geneva, foreign ministers focused on newly announced European Union sanctions. They're important because 85% of Libya's energy exports are to Europe. Hillary Clinton said no military action was pending, but at Westminster the Prime Minister made clear the option of enforcing a no-fly zone over Libya is being worked on. We do not in any way rule out the use of military assets. We must not tolerate this regime using military force against its own people. And in that context, I've asked the Ministry of Defence and the Chief of Defence Staff to work with our allies on plans for a military no-fly zone. But reviving an Iraq-style no-fly zone and imposing it over Libya would take time. 
huge questions have to be answered first. Under whose authority would it be imposed? The UN has so far ruled out backing military action in this crisis, and NATO is only in the very early stages of considering it. But financial pressure on the Gaddafi regime will build, slowly but steadily. It's now estimated that 80% of Libya's oil fields are in rebel hands. Over time, Colonel Gaddafi will run out of cash. It's fundamentally important. There really is nothing else in the economy apart from oil, um, which is why I think that, that the, the international oil companies will be invited back by the, by the next regime when it takes over. The greatest pressure on Colonel Gaddafi is internal, from his own people. He's lost large parts of his country to the rebellion, with the east of the country fully in opposition hands. Libya's second city, Benghazi, was the first to fall. There's been fierce fighting at Misrata, particularly to control the airbase. There are towns outside Tripoli which remain in the hands of Gaddafi loyalists, including Sirte, Colonel Gaddafi's birthplace. But the focus is still on the capital itself. Tripoli is home to around 1.7 million people out of a total population of 6.4 million. And it's still a command centre for up to an estimated 10,000 armed forces thought to be loyal to Gaddafi. As the fighting goes on, foreigners are still fleeing Libya. After the weekend exodus, both planes and ships continue to bring British and foreign nationals to safety. James Robbins, BBC News. Well, there's growing concern about the flight of tens of thousands of refugees fleeing the unrest in Libya. The United Nations says the number is rising by the hour. It estimates that 100,000 have crossed the border into Tunisia. Aid agencies say it is already a humanitarian emergency and they're appealing for the international community to intervene. From the border crossing point at Ras Ajidir, Ben Brown sent this report. They are desperate to escape from Libya, from its bloodshed and its horror. In no man's land, at the border, they wait in their thousands to cross into Tunisia. Most of these people are not Libyans, but migrants who've been working there. Egyptians, Tunisians, Turks, Chinese, Bangladeshis, and many other nationalities. Tempers fray. Some have traveled for days to get to this border crossing. They're tired, scared, hungry, and thirsty. <laughs> Well, we've been monitoring this border crossing all day and it is completely chaotic. There are perhaps 15 to 20,000 people back there right now still desperate to get out of Libya and into Tunisia. On this side of the border, the authorities are overwhelmed and they're pleading for help from the international community. Once they're in Tunisia, they get some food and water supplied by local volunteers, but many are then stranded here, the Egyptians in particular. And they've been protesting in their thousands against their government and its failure to get them home. This evening, many are sleeping rough on this border, bedding down as best they can for the night shivering as temperatures plummet. They can't go back to Libya, they can't go home, and they can't find shelter. Ben Brown, BBC News, on the Libyan-Tunisian border. And for more on the uh, crisis in Libya, including the latest developments and details of that BBC interview with Colonel Gaddafi 